Hi to everyone who sent in your question uh, in the form of a video. Thanks so much for participating, and I'm going to do my best to answer your questions right now. Hi, Lois. I just want to say thank you so much for creating this art book. I cannot wait to be able to read it. So my question is about your style and if there are any resources, books, tutorials, videos um, that you would recommend for people trying to work in a similar style, uh, heavily influenced by Disney animators like Glenn Keane. Um, I've looked for some books by him uh, or other Disney professionals and really haven't found a whole lot other than the art of books. Um, so I was just wondering if there are any particular resources you would recommend. Thanks so much. I cannot wait to read your book. Hey, Chelsea. Thanks so much. I'm glad you're excited about the book. I am too, for sure. I uh, can't wait to share it with everyone. Um, as for your question, I'm sorry to disappoint, but I don't really have any specific resources or books that I can recommend um, when it comes to learning that style, just simply for the reason that I have never really used these resources very heavily in my learning process. Um, my learning process has consisted mainly of a mixture of observation and practice. Uh, so whenever I see something that I would like to achieve in my work, I uh, try to observe it as closely as I can and sort of like figure out why it works the way it does and then practice it by just trying to integrate it into my style and, and mimicking styles and bringing that into my own skill set as much as possible. Um, I think if your work has a bit of, uh, you know, if it's a bit rigid and could use some more movement, some more curved lines, I recommend doing what I had to do a lot in animation school, which is learn how to capture movement and gesture by drawing from life and sort of sketching as regularly as you can, um, as quickly as you can. So what you can do is take your sketchbook and sit on a busy square and try to sketch people walking by. Um, the interesting challenge there is that you can never really capture their pose in too much detail before they've moved further down the street. So, you know, it's a really good way to force yourself to draw faster and to not really draw the details of who you're looking at, but really purely the movement. Um, you could also sketch, you know, people on television going by or dancers at a dance performance, things like that really help to get a more flowing, less rigid style. And I am hugely influenced by artists like Glenn Keane. I'm a huge fan. And I guess, you know, it always works to, if you, if you see something that you really like, like a great artist like Glenn Keane, you could always try sort of um, mimicking their style by just like sketching, you know, imitating their actual sketches and then taking what you've learned from that and, and applying it to real life sketches like after a sketching session um, to just try and get it integrated into your own skill set as fast as you can. Um, if, I know that you said that you've already checked out the Art of books, but if you haven't gotten it already, I really recommend the Art of Tangled. I think that it has really great Glenn Keane sketches in there, also great sketches by other artists, and because of the way that her hair flows and because of the sort of squash and stretch type of approach to the animation, there's so much movement in all of these sketches and there's a lot you can learn from them. So I'm sorry I don't have more specific resources, but I hope that this helps. So thanks so much for sending in your question. Hello Loish, I'm Angeline de Ballantine, a fellow artist and a fan of your art for a few years now. And my question to you is in relation to the way you illustrate the female form. The, the proportions aren't exactly realistic, but they're to me more realistic and complementary to the female form than say a lot of the female illustrations that we see in our society and around the world these days. Um, what inspired you to create them that way? Okay, thank you. Hi, Angeline. Um, I take that as a compliment, so thank you. And well, as for your question, um, what inspired me to draw that way has a lot to do with my early inspirations when I was learning how to draw. Um, my main early inspiration was Art Nouveau. And in Art Nouveau, it's very common to have like these beautiful 
flowing portraits of female characters that really match the beauty ideal of that time. So like sort of, you know, curvy, voluptuous, turn of the century type of women. And I was also really inspired by Disney princesses and a lot of girly stuff like that. So it felt natural for me to draw female characters most of the time and that hasn't really changed. Um, and over time, these types of characters have become a creative outlet for me to express the things that I like, um, like in terms of style, in terms of fashion, in terms of attitude. Uh, I really like to just explore the type of character that, you know, I would really like to see in real life and get to know and sort of walk up to them and maybe be their friend, that type of thing. And so I guess working in this way sort of has the natural result of putting a lot of female perspective into my work. Um, I think a lot of female characters that you find in media nowadays, in films, comics, that type of thing, I don't want to generalize them all, but many of them adhere to a beauty ideal that's more about a male audience uh, and a lot about sexiness in the more conventional sense. And I like to draw female characters that aren't only for a male audience. Um, and, you know, that, that are appealing in a way that isn't just limited to sexiness as it is seen in the world today. So I guess that's why many people feel that my work has a more realistic approach to the female form. Um, although, I mean, I, I aim for a very stylized type of look. So it's not necessarily realistic, but I think that's why you're getting the idea that it feels less sexualized than a lot of female characters that exist in media today. So I hope that answers your question, and thanks so much for sending it in. Hello, I'm Aran, illustrator and colorist from Italy. I'd like to know more about the resources and inspirations you use for your colors. Is there any book on color theory or coloring in general that helped you during the years and that you feel like suggesting to other artists? Thank you very much and congratulations for the amazing project. Ciao, ciao. Hey, Erin, thanks for your video. Um, I have to disappoint once more because I don't have any specific books that help me out with coloring. Um, as in, no specific instructive books that really teach how coloring works or color theory. Um, I learn the most from observation and when it comes to colors, my main inspirations are nature, um, just just the beautiful colors, the balance you find in colors in nature. Um, things like, you know, fashion, um, other art especially. So I try to observe colors that I like as closely as possible and really sort of understand what I like about them and then really try to get that to show in my art. Um, it's also sort of like an intuitive process because when I draw digitally, um, I have so many color editing tools available to me that I can just sort of tweak the color scheme until it feels right to me. So working digitally has given me like so much uh, flexibility in choosing colors that really helped define my current process for choosing colors. Um, but as far as the observation process goes, I guess, you know, I, again, I can recommend some books of artists that I think are really good with colors um, and that have inspired me a lot. So I'm going to recommend two artists. One of them is James Jean, and his Fables book is a really good example of some of his strongest work. Um, what James Jean does that inspires me enormously is he uses a sort of muted or monochromatic color scheme and then adds these beautiful bright accents to them. He does that in a lot of his work and that's something that I do a lot too and I learned a lot from just looking at his work. Uh, another artist that I can recommend is, give me a second, is Koji Morimoto. He's um, this wonderful artist who's also an animator. Um, and he uses these fantastic mixtures of sort of like bright reds and oranges with some really nice bright blues and greens, which is something that I do a lot too. Uh, he inspired me, his animations inspired me a lot when I was sort of like picking up digital art and doing that more and more. So I think if you check out 
their work and observe it as closely as you can. Um, you can get an idea of what has inspired me throughout the years. Um, so sorry I don't have anything more specific and more detailed. Uh, I hope this still helps. Hi Loish. My question is, how do you balance your personal life and outings with managing your career and artistic pursuits? Do you ever feel like one holds the other back, and how do you adapt to accommodate both? Thanks again for answering. Hi Tim, thanks so much for your question. Um, it's a hard one to answer because it's a constant struggle for me to balance personal life and work. Um, the reason being that, you know, art is my hobby, but also my work. So I really enjoy doing it, but I shouldn't do it too much. Uh, just for the sake of keeping my stress levels down and maintaining the health of my arm because I had a repetitive strain injury last year uh, that I need to keep under control. So I guess uh, the way that I really manage that is by managing my hours. I try to make sure that I keep my evenings and my weekends free. Um, I really try to force that as much as I can and, you know, get force force myself to take time to relax and get away from creative endeavors. Um, I try to make sure that the things I do in my free time to relax aren't related to my identity as an artist, but just things that, you know, um, things that, you know, take me away from my role as an artist. So things like traveling, um, concerts, music, festivals, that type of thing, you know, it helps me sort of escape the stress of being a freelancer and yeah, I guess that that's the way I really manage it. I try to maintain strong boundaries between the two and uh, try to regain my energy as much as I can so that I can enthusiastically continue my work day uh, when Monday comes. So, you know, I haven't really found the perfect balance yet, but up until now, keeping track of my hours has been the best way, and as long as I do that, I don't feel like one holds the other back. I feel like one uh, enhances the other and gives me energy for the other. So I hope that answers your question. Thank you so much. Hi, Lois. Um, thank you for making this art book. I am Isabel. I am an artist too, and I love to draw in many different mediums like acrylic, digital arts, uh, vectors, pencils, a bit of everything and my character style goes from cartoon to semi-realistic and I wonder sometimes if it confuses my potential clients so do you think it's better to have one recognizable style or is it okay to have such diversity in your portfolio? Thank you! Hey Isabel, thanks for your question. Um, and it's a good question. A lot of people have asked this in the past, and there's no one definite answer that um, applies to everybody, because depending on what field you want to enter, there may be different requirements. I'd say that having a wide variety of technical skills um, and being able to adapt your style to many different things, um, as well as having a distinct style, those are both really good skills to have. Um, and you know, uh, one or the other can be your strength as an artist. So you can be somebody who can do a lot of different things and be highly flexible, and that could be your strength. Or you could be somebody who specializes in something, specializes in a certain style and a certain technique, and that can be your strength. So it depends. Um, my personal experience has been that having a distinctive style is a huge asset um, because clients approach me to be able to draw something in that style. Uh, it helps my work stand out and um, also, you know, it helps um, me be able to present myself as the specialist of my own style. So if somebody's looking for that style, I'm the one to, you know, to go to, to make it. So that's, you know, been really useful and valuable. Um, so I guess my advice to you would be, just from my personal point of view, to keep that variety in your work, keep working in all these different media and all these different styles, but try to search for your own voice in all of those so that you can sort of do them in your own way. Um, that way you kind of get the best of both worlds. Um, when people see your work, they can recognize it as yours. 
but you also present yourself as an artist with a wide variety of skills. Um, and I think that that, you know, can really uh, help you stand out and be your strength as an artist. So I hope that answers your question. Alright, so there's one more question, and this one was submitted in text by Michaela from the Philippines. And her question is, what advice would you give to someone who wants to pursue art, but their parents aren't too supportive on the idea of having art as an actual job? I don't want to disappoint them, but I really want to do art as well. Um, that's really difficult for me to answer because I haven't been in that situation, luckily. Uh, my parents have always been quite supportive of my decision to pursue art. Um, I think that has a lot to do with the fact that um, uh, the tuition isn't as expensive here in the Netherlands. So, you know, if it wouldn't have worked out, then it wouldn't have been financially crippling for me or my parents. Um, and I do realize that other people's situations when choosing their career is much more sensitive than mine was. Um, I think that, um, you know, my personal point of view on this issue is that there's a myth that artists are doomed to struggle and be, you know, starving artists. Um, that there's no way that an artist can have a stable life or a stable income. And I, you know, I called it a myth for a reason. I don't think that's true. There's a lot of um, struggles to be had in the art world. Um, especially as a freelancer, it's quite hard to sort of like, you know, be your own manager, negotiate your own prices, um, and really tackle the business side of it. But on the other hand, um, I know a lot of artists who have a stable income and a stable life. And I know plenty of people who have studied other things, who have chosen a different career path that uh, didn't get a stable life and are struggling to find work. Um, so, you know, that's not to say that you should choose art because it's stable, but that is just to say that you never know beforehand how things will turn out. Um, so I think that's something your parents can take into account. On the other hand, um, you know, uh, just some personal advice um, is that, you know, when you're about to choose your career path, you're probably quite young. You're probably anywhere between 16, 19 years old. And um, you might not realize at that age, uh, I sound like a very old person saying this, but you might not realize at that age how young you are and how much your situation will change later in your life. Um, when you're that young and your parents have a large influence over you, um, it's, it's difficult to picture that later in your life, your parents may not have that same influential role. Um, it's a very natural process for your parents to become less and less influential figures as you grow older and become your own person and live your own life. And uh, if you choose your career path based on what your parents want, um, it's you who has to do the work. It's you who has to live that life. It's you who has to live amongst your peers who will probably be, you know, um, heavily defined by your career choice. You have to put in all that work, so it's really important to make a decision that you can live with and that you have to live with for the rest of your life. Um, so that's the reason, you know, if you're very passionate about art, to really think twice before choosing a different career path. And that is also the reason why I chose art, because before deciding to study animation, I was considering history, anthropology, um, a bunch of social science things. And I knew that as much as I really enjoyed these things, I, you know, the rest of my life would be a struggle between doing these things that would be my work and drawing and wanting to draw and wanting to be creative in that way. So that's something you can take into consideration when making your decision. Um, and I really think the, the best advice I can give is to realize that you're making your own decision for your own life that you have to live. Um, take that as a guide when you're deciding what to do, um, because only later you'll see how much your decision has influenced the direction your life has taken. So I hope that helps answer your question, and I really wish you the best of luck in making your decision. All right, thanks to everyone who participated, and thanks to you guys for watching. Bye.